I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Hey, Marissa, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. I'm so excited that we like we are finally saying that to each other. It's been we a are. whole year. Actually, by the time An this airs, a year. year and one day. Yes. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's gone fast. It really did. And it, it yeah, and it, it went fast and it was it was full of a lot of ups and downs and bumps and bruises and and I wanna well that sounds terrible, doesn't it? <laughs> but I, I do want to apologize to our listeners for last week's poor sound quality. So this was not a problem with microphones, it was a problem with me not <laughs> plugging mine in. So you we think actually after had to a use year, the backup. We got it right. <laughs> but we didn't. <laughs> so now so now I'll just share with them what we talked about before we started recording, that there is a red light in front of my eyes, and you're always going to say, Dave, can you see the light? Just yep. follow the light, and if the light's on, my microphone's going, and Tim will love us, he won't be upset with us, and we will have our crystal clear sound quality. Yes, yes. Couldn't believe it. We That's... finally got all the equipment straight straightened out, and I forgot to plug my microphone in. Always something oh, well. exciting. and. Like you said, and we learn ups and downs, but I'd say definitely more ups and just a lot, you know, a lot of learning this year. Right, so. a lot of learning. Yeah, and we got a lot of great feedback, and and we'll talk about that later. But the 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 blog post that uh, or the email that went out this morning was really about the power of commitment, and and I used the 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 podcast as an example of when you're committed to something. What can happen? And, and, you know, the podcast, I don't even remember whose idea it was to begin with. I, I don't think it was mine. Um, I remember being encouraged to do it. I remember, um, you know, saying to you, well, I'll do it if you help. And you said yes. And I was surprised, <laughs> very happy and surprised. And and then asking Tim, Tim, our my, my son, who's our audio tech that does all our editing and our posting of the podcast, if he would help. And in sure form, as Tim always does, he says, why in the world do you want to do a podcast? And he was pushing me for my why. Mm-hmm. He, he, is, he really has a gift for making me think through why I want to do what I want to do. And, once, and then he said, and I'll only help you if you promise to do it for a year. Mm-hmm. So does that mean we get to quit? No, we would have quit last week. <laughs> so no, we're not quitting. We're no. gonna we're gonna keep going. We but his reason was he said because you're gonna get discouraged. Mm-hmm. Nobody's gonna listen at first. You're gonna wonder is it worth it? And he said it sometimes takes a year for a podcast to catch on. Mm-hmm. People want to see a lot of episodes. They want to see that somebody had the commitment to stay with it. So as as we kind of teased at the beginning, this is our first anniversary Mm -hmm. and so i kind of identified for people what it took for us to get this done so i am going to read a little bit from my my email post researching and writing 52 weekly blog posts that drive the content for the podcast so a week typically several days or a few days before we record i give you the the email you can do the editing you know we we share ideas with each other um and only then are we ready to record it. And my portion of that, of just researching and writing that <clears throat> weekly blog post slash email can take three hours. Mm-hmm. And then it's the time it takes you to edit it. I don't know how long that, it depends on how messed up my writing is. <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me, and see my cough has been a problem probably since episode one. <laughs> happy anniversary so then, cough. So then, <laughs> that's my happy anniversary cough, exactly. So then you do your editing we do the recording and the recording itself, it usually takes about, what's it, what'd you say? 45 minutes to an hour to lay down 28 Mm -hmm. minutes of content. Yep. That's about it. And we're, we're getting a little better, I think, but it's not perfect. Um, and then Tim has to edit it. And sometimes like when I mess up and don't plug in my mic, it takes him a lot of time to edit it because he's trying to do apply filters and he's trying to, mix the two the two um, tracks the two mono tracks into a stereo track and it's it's a lot of work for him Mm -hmm. and then he posts it Um, there's the the podcast description has to be written and then that is given to Tim as well and he posts that and then so you kind of ask yourself well is it really really worth was it worth all that effort and we'll get into more details later but 
But from the feedback we've gotten from people from the 27 states and seven or eight countries where we've had downloads and over 1,300 minutes of digital content that's on the web for our members to use, yeah, I think it's worth it. I agree. And I've enjoyed it. It's <laughs> been a lot of fun. And I, I really appreciate, Marissa, your willingness to, um, to take the journey with me and to, and to make it possible. It's, it's been so fun. So, it's been so fun. And, 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 it, and now, so we've, we've made it through vacations. Yep. We've, we've, we recorded one podcast where probably six or eight weeks in, I was in Virginia. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time we ever recorded in two locations. And then we figured out that's easier than being in the yeah. same room and trying to edit the sound. Um, we made it through a couple more vacations. Now we're going to have to make it through maternity leave. But we're going to do it. Yours, not mine. So <laughs> we're going to do it. Yeah. Because we're working ahead and, 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 and it's going to be fine. And our goal is to every week have a podcast ready for our listeners. Yes. And we have some so, exciting plans. We, we won't share too much now, but... Um, exactly. We, we will share since... It's going to be really exciting. Our second year here, going into our second year, that we are planning an exciting second year. So... Um, I may not be here for every episode. I know I, I know I won't be, but you'll hear me every once in a while, and, I, and then you'll hear from some other folks, too. We at least need to give you the day off when you go into labor. Oh, that would be nice. Thank you. Oh, or, <laughs> or maybe the week after. We'll see. <laughs> so I think, so now I really, because our goal is always to, to provide, you know, every episode we try to provide content. It's the same with my weekly email slash blog post. My goal is to add value to our members at MACNE and to our listeners and to give them something that they can apply in their life to just make their life better. Mm -hmm. So look, I wanted to talk about commitment and some, some things. And I really look forward to you um, giving some of your feedback as well. But the reality of commitment is that it's like interest. It compounds. So if you think about it, the things that you do daily over time have much greater significance in your life. If, if you think of a goal that you tried to achieve, okay, it's a one-off, it's done. But if you look at something that you're committed to, let's say professional growth or personal growth and development, it's little things that you do every day that over the period of time have tremendous results. Like the podcast, you know, I don't know how many listeners downloaded the first episode when we first did it. Some have gone back and done it. Mm-hmm. But now to think about, you know, the 27 states from Maine to California, from Florida to Oregon or Washington State, excuse me. I mean, it's it's amazing where the, the reach and it was only there because every week I wrote every week we did a podcast and we put the time in even when it didn't look like there would be much value in it. Mm hmm. Um, and, and I had another note here. The key is to identify small actions you can take daily that will move you, move you toward your goal. Just like Nike says, just do it. Yep. I love that. Because I think um, that's, that's so important. It, daily habits are, right. are the best, you know, the best way to, to stick to something because it doesn't give you too much wiggle room to, to veer off the path. Right. So um, exactly, and, and I know Randy talks about this in his book, Present Future Leader. Um, but you build these neuro connections. I'm probably messing this up scientifically somehow. No, nope, you got it right. But I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. And when you do something daily, they get stronger and stronger and stronger a lot faster than if you do something weekly. Um, and and so I think that the daily habits really do add up. And you know, I love little by little progress. Yep. And and you did mention uh, Randy's book, um, Future Present Leaders, or maybe I said that wrong. Present Future. But where could Present Future Leaders? Mm -hmm. So where can they get that? Um, on Amazon. Yep. There's on Amazon. Yep. So, there's a yeah. Kindle version right there for download. So, yep. Right there. So people really need to do that. Um, one of the things that, and I so I was looking at some quotes that might jump out at me. Uh, John Maxwell said this one. I love it. You cannot achieve what you have not defined. Mm-hmm. And so many people say, well, you know, I want to get ahead. I want to grow. I want to get better. What do you mean by that? You know, what, what is, let's define 
specifically what it is that you want to achieve. And, and a lot of times in my, in my goal setting class, which is part of trans, uh, supervisory leadership, I use the example of um, the year before I got married, I knew I, was gonna, I knew I wanted to marry my wife. I felt that's what God wanted in my life. But I also knew that I was, well, I was out of shape. And, you know, I was working to be a tool and die maker, not a doctor. So she wasn't going to marry me for money. <laughs> um, so I thought I got to make this as easy as possible on her to say yes. So I decided I wanted to lose weight and I wanted to get in shape. And, and so I use the example of how I put a plan in place to eat better, to exercise every day. And really over the course of a summer from June till the end of September, I lost 20 pounds and four inches off my waist. And I keep at, and so when I do the teaching, I say, so what was my goal? They said, your goal was to get the girl to say yes. I said, exactly. Any girl? And they said, no, that girl. I said, yeah, that, my favorite Austrian. That's the one that I wanted. So it wasn't that I just wanted any girl to say, I had to have a specific one in mm -hmm. mind. And I think that's the key with all of our goals, with all of our, you know, where is it you're trying to go? What is it you want to achieve? And for us, we wanted to come up with, if I jump back to the podcast, we wanted to come up with digital content. We wanted to reach out to members and to people beyond our membership with the leadership principles, the teachings that I was doing at MACNI. So we had a very specific focus, and we just did it little by little, every week, every day, having, some, um, having those steps in front of us. Um, so we had to refine our goals. We had to be very specific. Um, and I, I had a note here that was my own quote. If you don't know what you want, how will you know? If you get there, mm -hmm. if you don't know where you're going, how are you going to know if you get there? You got to get your mindset right. Um, and, and what I mean by that is you have to visualize where it is you want to be. And it has to be something extremely tangible for you. So I, I use this example when I was doing the goal setting thing. So when I was standing and part of my exercise routine at the time was to jump in a lake and swim back and forth to uh, a neighbor a couple doors down. They had a raft and, and the dock at my parents' camp. So I would swim back and forth twice every day. Um, my guess is it might have been 400 yards, thereabouts. And I jumped in the water even if it was... The only time I didn't jump in the water was there was lightning because I said being dead isn't going to help this. So <laughs> if it was raining, I jumped in the lake. If it was windy, I jumped in the lake. And then I said to people, so what, did I, what was my motivation to jump in the lake. And then they all say, the girl. Exactly. I had her picture in my mind, and then I jumped in the lake. So whatever your goal is, whatever it is you're trying to be committed to, visualize that. Have it become very, very real for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then we already touched on this. Create daily success habits. And, you know, those neural pathways that Randy talked about in his book, absolutely critical to this, that you, you do something every day so some folks may say to me, so what are you, does that mean that you're writing your blog post every day? No, I write it once a week. But, but you, every day. You write it, I, you know, you write your post on Monday. I edit it Tuesday, yep. Wednesday. We post an F, you know, we do something on our podcast every day. Exactly. We mm -hmm. do it every day. Yeah. And what they don't see and what, what you don't see is that every day I'm trying to listen to content or read content. Mm -hmm. so the ideas that I have are so and somebody also asked this so Dave how do you know what to write about it's whatever I'm experiencing at the time you know I went through a bit of a, cha a couple challenging phone calls today um, rather than whine and complain about it I started writing about it and it's going to be one of our podcasts you know not specifics but what I was th that idea had me so I just sat and I wrote so I have this concept and then I start looking for information about it where quotes about it. I might listen to a podcast about that topic. So every day I have these daily habits where I'm listening to content, I'm reading a book, I'm reading uh, different people's blog posts so that there is material that can be there when we need to draw on it for the podcast. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about the next one, be accountable to someone. So for me... A big thing for me was, I don't want to let you down. Mm -hmm. And and I don't know if we ever talked about this in, in one of our podcasts, but I remember a day, and I don't even know if we were doing podcasts yet, 
where I had trouble getting something done and I said to you, is it okay if I give it to you tomorrow? And you didn't say no, but the way you answered made me realize that it would add difficulty to your day. So I just thought to myself, forget it. I got to knuckle down. I have to do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm accountable to you to get you the content because you're doing a favor for me. And I think that's key. We've got to be accountable to people. And we've got, right. you know, not, not only to each other, but to, right. you know, when we think about why we, why we really did this, re, you know, refining our goal, it was to provide content to our membership. Um, right. It's not, you know, we don't really track our downloads very closely. Um, we're not, we're not doing it for those, those numbers that show up on a chart, right. um, you know, we're, when we log yeah, in, we're, we're not looking for, for clicks. No, we're yep. looking to support our members. And, and I think that's also a group that we feel extremely accountable to. Um, I know there Absolutely. are probably a few people where if we didn't, if we didn't have something come out, we'd get a, a couple of people that um, are avid listeners wondering what happened to us. And not to right. mention, you know, right. we, we promised Tim a whole year. So we knew for sure. Yep. <laughs> That Tim wasn't going to. Well, we made that commitment. We made that, so. <laughs> Maybe I need to get a commitment from him that'll edit it for another year. Yeah, we should. Which I think he'll do. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? We we should tell people we're not abusing him, even though he is a starving college student. He does get paid for editing our podcast. Yes, <laughs> that is which true. is good. But you're right. We we're accountable to others, and you know mm -hmm. it's one of those things. Once you start. You can't stop. You can't mm -hmm. back away. And, and if you look at it, there's a lot of podcasts where there's three episodes and no more. Mm -hmm. Well, we found that when we tried to pick the name because the next page wasn't my first choice. Right. And thankfully, you came up with something that was close to what I was thinking, which was the second page. Um, so you're absolutely right. And then I had another one here. Focus on small victories. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, sometimes whenever I can hammer out that email, that blog post, and I send it, it's like, yes, check that off. Mm -hmm. There's one. You know, and, and now when we're in a phase where we're trying to record multiple sessions, multiple podcasts in a week to get ahead, every time I get one written, that's a victory. Check yeah. it off. It, celebrate them because they're amazing once you get that done. Mm -hmm. um, develop a hunger for growth. I think if you want to be committed to things, you got to be hungry to get better. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing as tragic than people that don't want to get better. It's, it is, you know, I, I'm, I'm reminded of a scenario where bringing a challenge to a senior manager and rather than him embracing it and realizing this was an opportunity to get better, he just turned and attacked the person bringing the, the awareness. That's just tragic. Because mm -hmm. there's no hope for a person like that. Right. You know, you might as well just forget about growing because you've given up. How about setbacks? Plan for setbacks. Mm -hmm. So what kinds of setbacks did we have with our podcast? Setbacks. Well, I mean, I hate to call these setbacks because they, they weren't so much setbacks. It's just things that we had to plan for. But, you know, right. knowing that there would be times when you would be out of town or I would be out of town. Right. Um, you know, my maternity vacations, leave, uh, things like that. I mean, they, they could be setbacks if we waited until the last minute to, to right. realize, Hey, like, wait, it's Friday. And I just realized you're on vacation on Wednesday. What are we going to do? Um, so I think we, we yeah. planned ahead for some of those things. Um, exactly. I think some of the things that we thought would be setbacks actually ended up being really great opportunities for growth. Um, we thought that one of the setbacks would be that first time that you were in Virginia, we thought that would be a setback that we wouldn't be together right. in the same room and that we would have a lower quality podcast for that one episode. Well, it ended up being quite the opposite where we realized that right. we did really well in separate rooms and that it was actually going to cut the editing time, I don't know, in half or at least by 20, 25%. Um, yeah, probably but, in half. Yeah, so th you know those were all things. And maybe if I, maybe if I can explain to the folks what we mean by that. So when we were in the same room, we still recorded on two machines, mm -hmm. 
And if for if people with for our listeners, the times when we're commenting on each other, or if you say something and I say that's right, or huh, uh huh, that was a nightmare for Tim because he would literally have to turn off one record, one he'd have to silence one signal while the other signal was peaking, and it was just so now we can talk at the same time, mm-hmm. and, and it works fine provided I plug my microphone in. Right. But, so what, you know what we're but so you you need to know that things are just in general with committing to anything that there will be times when something is bound to to happen and you need to remain flexible and right. and open minded and, and understanding that there there is a solution and it might end up being better exactly. than you thought exactly and, you know so now we and so you have to you know we have to plan for these setbacks so literally. We now call each other rather than just on our phones. We mm-hmm. call each other on a Zoom account so that we have a backup in case something happens so we don't have to re- ever record it twice again. Because mm-hmm. we, we had to do that once. We had to record one twice. Yep. So those are the kind of things you had to work through. And um, so what are some, do you have any humorous moments or, or high points as you think back on the podcast? Hmm surprises or um i mean i feel like for me in my role with the podcast is that almost like every episode is a bit surprising to me because although i do read the posts obviously and i edit them and read them ahead of time um you're the one who who was inspired like you said you 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 write about what's going on in your life so you know that best not me so I'd say there have been a few times where maybe you've caught me off off guard with questions, but I like that it keeps me <laughs> on my toes. <laughs> you never know what I'm going to say. I never know. Um, and I think that's... Now you know what it's like for my kids, Yeah, right? yeah. I... they never know what I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. And I've even... It's funny because I've even... A few people have said to me that they can tell when I don't know how to respond. That They said that they can tell when I'm really caught off guard. Even even without you know seeing me, they're like, oh, we know exactly what you look like right now, um, and I I think some we've gotten some funny feed other funny feedback where, um, and this kind of comes back to when we used to record in the same room. We, right. We had someone write in and said, we have a feeling that Marissa is nodding, but we can't tell that she's nodding <laughs> because we can't see her. But now, we can't see now because you used to be able to see that I was nodding, and so now right. that we're in a separate room, I have to affirm my agreement differently. Verbally, yeah, mm-hmm. and, and so and and the amazing part is, even with all my surprise questions, you still get on the line once a week with me. So yeah. <laughs> that's pretty amazing. I'm a little bit more prepared now. I think the first few episodes, I I was nervous for a while. Well. Yeah, and we do share the con- we share a lot of notes with each other mm-hmm. now that we didn't before. Mm-hmm. I mean, we don't script it. People mm-hmm. said, "Do you have a script?" And well, we used to have a script where you had a color and I had a color, and it was just to get us started and stop. But just to we've done pretty much remind we that remind us what our names were. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. But now we just we I share the notes that I have. You share some comments with me, and we mm-hmm. go. Yep. Yeah. Um, and again, it was it was the commitment that made this work. Mm-hmm. You know, my commitment to you to not let you down and to get the things to you and your commitment to me to, to get in front of a microphone every week and our commitment to our listeners, to our MACNI members, that we were going to be there every week to add value to them. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it really is amazing. Uh, Vince Lombardi said, the quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to their commitment to excellence, regardless of their chosen field of endeavor. Mm-hmm. I thought that was great. And, and there was another one. James Womack, who um, is a, a, a lean manufacturing expert, I believe, he said, commitment unlocks the doors of imagination, allows vision, and gives us the right stuff to turn our dream into reality. I thought that was amazing. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's a quote I need to put in the show notes. Yes, I think so. So as we, as we wind down this, um, and you know, some other notes here, if people would have just seen that office with boxes piled in it and our our note on the door recording mm-hmm. studio seven recording in process or something that we taped on the door as we went in they would they would laugh um we had all kinds of mic failures me forgetting to plug them in but we never missed a week because we were committed to it so 
some details and statistics that people may want to know um, as I turn my page here. So clearly the, the state with the highest number of downloads is New York because that's where our membership is. Um, second highest to, with like 2,100, almost 2,200 as of this week. Ohio is at 274. That must be all my relatives listening. <laughs> um, surprisingly, Georgia coming in right behind them. With, and that's kind of a new um, with 104 downloads. Uh, California is a new one coming on strong. They were almost not in the picture a month or so ago. Uh, Maine still is hanging in there with 96 downloads in um, uh, fairly. And, and the newest one that I that I just saw this week Six people in, or six downloads, because we don't know how, who's downloading what. Six downloads in Germany just in the last week. Mm -hmm. well, we so, have some, man, we pretty do amazing. some member companies that are German based, so maybe that's true. Mark Hort yeah. and Felix Scholler, Felix Scholler yeah. yeah. So again, it's twenty-seven states: Canada, Costa Rica, Spain, Italy, China, Japan, Taiwan, and Germany. Where that's will we cool. be next? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What are we going to talk about next? I do well, know. Well, you do know, so why don't you share? Is overcommitment stealing your productivity? Right. So we've talked about how great committing to things can be um, for the last 25 or so minutes. But in exactly. the next episode, we'll, we're going to discuss what happens when you're too committed. Exactly. That it is not only counterproductive but it can be extremely dangerous physically mm -hmm. and relational relationship whatever relationally i don't know <laughs> i'm not a wordsmith <laughs> so we you know as we have this anniversary uh podcast we really want to thank the folks that have listened especially those that listen to episode one and are still with us mm -hmm. if there is anybody other than than my wife and my mother and maybe <laughs> your mother but anyways <laughs> No, I'm sure there's a few more. Um, and, and we want to remind everybody, because we don't do this often, but if you like it, like it on, on uh, iTunes, write it, give us a review, um, and share it with your friends. And tell us what you'd like us to talk about. I mean, we've got some pretty exciting plans for the next probably 16 to 18 weeks, mm -hmm. but we could use a few more. Yeah. And if you're, so and plans, if you're one of those any, people that uh, is not from our MACNI membership that may be in one of those states or countries that we listed, um, yes. send us an email and, and tell us how, yeah. you, how you found us or who referred our podcast to you. Um, we'd love to thank them. That would be great. And just to understand more about who's listening. I think as we've expanded right. our reach, um, it would be helpful to know who's listening. It would be. And my email contact and your email contact is in the show notes. Yep. Any plans for the weekend? Plans for the weekend. I feel like all my plans for for the whole summer is just going to be to, like I told you, have a more intentional summer, enjoy the weather. Yep. We have been so lucky to have just phenomenal weather so far. And it has been amazing. Not even technically summer yet. So just continuing to enjoy that. And um, I'm sure we'll get some pool time in. How about you? I think there's a really good chance I'm putting the old boat in the water this weekend. Awesome. If not this weekend, before our next podcast, I, I pulled her out of the, the storage shed next to my house and I started her up and I sent a quick video to my boys and said, you know, the grand old lady has awakened from her long winter's nap. <laughs> so that's my hope. Awesome. So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was The Next Page. Mm -hmm.